friends, I am Panindra Gupta and if you like this video, please subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. Hello friends, my name is Panindra and in this video, I am going to explain you about the chapter of carbohydrates. As this is a long chapter, uh, the playlist will be created in my channel and all the information of these carbohydrates will be given in the channel. Okay? And this is the first video of the carbohydrates. Normally, what is meant by carbohydrates? Carbohydrates are the derivatives of saccharides. So what is meant by saccharides? Saccharides are nothing but uh, if you take any sugar uh, like glucose, sucrose in that way. Saccharides are nothing but the sugars. Okay. Coming to the second point. Aldehydes and ketone groups. It, carbohydrates consist of aldehydes and ketone groups. Aldehydes and ketone groups are nothing but if you take glyceraldehyde uh, which is aldose, uh, which is uh, aldehyde group and in the ketone group if you take dihydroxy acetone like this in this way if you take the groups of this aldehyde and ketone group i will explain you in the monosaccharide and coming to the third point uh, this carbohydrates are the simple sugar and what is the molecular formula of this uh, chemical formula of this carbohydrates is cn h2n or else it can also be written as cn h2 the whole n okay and coming to the fourth point these are the chief constituents of cell wall and monopolysaccharides sorry mucopolysaccharides that is nothing but if you see in the cell wall, uh, the cell wall of any eukaryotes or prokaryotes, if you see in that cell wall, the carbohydrates content will be more only in the cell wall and also in the mucopolysaccharides also. And coming to the next point, chief constituents of glycolipids and glycoproteins also. Uh, what is mean by glycoproteins and glycolipids? Glycolipids is nothing but uh, for the structure of lipids, there will, uh, there will be the presence of glucose. Uh, when there is a presence of glucose, then it is said to be as glycolipids in the same way it applies to the glycoprotein also. So normally there are three types of uh, saccharides that is nothing but three types of carbohydrates they are nothing but monosaccharide disaccharide polysaccharide and as there are only three types of uh, carbohydrates that is nothing but monosaccharide disaccharide and polysaccharide but also you should include oligosaccharide because it is one of the carbohydrate which which is which can be included in the carbohydrates but normally there are only three types of carbohydrates only okay monosaccharide disaccharide and polysaccharide and now let us learn about the monosaccharide so now let us discuss about monosaccharides. So what is monosaccharides? Monosaccharides are the simple sugar of carbohydrates uh, and it consists of only one sugar unit. As the name indicates mono. Mono means only one sugar unit. It consists of only one sugar unit. And that sugar includes uh, glucose or else fructose or any aldehyde or keto group also. I have said you in the beginning of the carbohydrates introduction right. And what is the molecular formula of the monosaccharides? CnH2O hold to the N. This is the molecular formula of monosaccharides and I have said to you that uh, there are a number of aldehydes and keto groups which are mainly present in the carbohydrates right and what are the aldehyde and keto groups if you take triosin uh, the what is the aldehyde group for triosin glyceraldehyde and keto group for triosin is dihydroxyacetone and for the tetrosin aldehyde group consists of erythrose and for keto group it consists of erythrolose if you take uh, in the pentosin, it consists of ribose and in keto group it consists of ribulose. In hexosin, glucose and fructose. And in heptosin, pseudoheptose and pseudoheptulose. And most of the uh, monosaccharides consists of hexones, hexosin only. That is nothing but it consists of sugars of aldehyde and keto groups which contains glucose and fructose. And now let us discuss about uh, properties of monosaccharide. In these properties of monosaccharide, you can understand the structure of glucose and structure of fructose. Okay, okay. So now let us discuss about the properties of monosaccharides. And <coughs> what are the properties of monosaccharides? Isomerism, epimerism, anomerism. So now let us discuss about isomerism. And coming to the isomerism, isomerism exhi exhibits its part in two ways. <coughs> Stereoisomerism, optical isomerism. First one, let us discuss about stereoisomerism. So, what is meant by stereoisomerism? Stereoisomerism is a compound which has or as which have same empirical formula but different in its special arrangement of groups. Not in the groups but also in the periods. For example, if you take aldehyde group or else if you take keto group, there will be change in that group, uh, in the position of the group, but the empirical formula will be the same only. Okay. And this can be denoted as D, L, L, D and L. D is denoted as dextro and L is denoted by levo. And D, what is meant by dextro and levo? Now I will explain you. See here. If you take the example of, uh, now I will explain you two examples of this uh, properties of this stereoisomerism. So the best example of the stereoisomerism is glucose and glyceraldehyde. So firstly let us learn about the example of glucose. 
in the way of stereoisomerism so normally we all know that glucose is a six carbon compound so how many carbon compounds will be present totally six carbon compounds will be present totally six carbon compounds will be present if you see a first second third fourth fifth and sixth totally six carbon compounds will be present right and if you see in the fifth carbon uh, the in left side there is a presence of h and right side there is a presence of oh alcohol group right and if you see in the l glucose that is nothing but if you see in the right picture see here there is a, a h which is present at the right side and oh which is present at the left side which is quite opposite to the d glucose if you see in the d glucose there is a h towards left and right side oh and if you see in the l glucose there is a presence of oh towards left and h towards right that is the main difference between d glucose and l glucose there is a slightly change over the group but the empirical formula will be same okay that's what given in the definition if you see here in the definition uh, have same empirical formula but different in the spatial arrangement spatial arrangement is nothing but position of groups if you see here the position normally if you see in the d glucose uh, th this is a normal structure is this one d glucose is a uh, perfect structure original structure but if you see in the uh, spatial arrangement after completion of the spatial arrangement then it leads to the formation of l glucose that is nothing but change takes place so that's the main difference between d glucose and l glucose and that's the definition of stereoisomerism in second example if you take glyceride if you see in that example of glyceride so this is the proper structure of glyceride and this is the structure which undergoes after the spatial arrangement okay of group if you see here this is a as the same which occurs in the glucose there is a h towards left and oh towards right uh, as it is a d glyceride this is d glyceride and this is l glyceride so in the d glyceride what happens the h which is, will be present towards left side and oh will be alcohol group will be present towards right side of the carbon and if you see here this will be totally reversed which will be taken place after the process of spatial arrangement of the groups so that's the uh, main aim of this stereoisomerism so now uh, let us discuss about the optical isomerism so now let us learn about the optical isomerism uh, now we have discussed about stereoisomerism now let us learn about the optical isomerism so what is the definition of the optical isomerism so if you see here the ability of a compound to rotate the plane polarized light is known as optical isomerism so to know the to know about this definition uh, you have to know uh, see here if you take an example of a bulb as it exhibits light rays this when you switch on the bulb it exhibits light rays which which will be passed over many directions as it doesn't travel only in the one direction right as it travels in the many direction uh, if you keep a prism over there if you keep a prism over there uh, the main uh, that so many polyhedric light rays which is placed on the prism it converts into monochromatic light okay the polychromatic lights which will be transferred to the prism it converts the polychromatic light to the monochromatic light which we all know okay and that monochromatic light which acts as plain polarized light that is shortly abbreviated as ppl and that that ppl that is nothing but plain polarized light if it turns towards left side if i will rotate the camera as the light which is passed over like this so if this plain polarized light will be passed towards left side then it acts as L or minus that is nothing but levo which is shortly denoted as L and it is represented as minus and when this plane polarized light will be uh, will be moved towards right side will turn toward right side then it is said to be as dextro or as it is also denoted by plus symbol so when this uh, plane polarized light will uh, move towards left side it is denoted as l that is nothing but levo and when it to when it turns towards right side then it is denoted by d that is nothing but dextro so normally this opto optical isomerism is denoted by d and l that is nothing but d indicates dextro and l indicates levo and this d uh, dextro is denoted by d and levo is denoted by l and this d can also be represented as plus mark and this l is also denoted by minus mark so this is about the optical isomerism so now uh, let us learn about the so up to now we have discussed only about isomerism and coming to the second one let us discuss about epimerism so what is meant by epimerism epimerism is nothing but two sugars which consists of glucose galactose mannose fructose etc if you take any sugars but if you take two sugars which differ in the configuration at single carbon atom is known as epimerism so to understand this definition now i will explain you uh, in the form of structures of glucose and uh, galactose and the for example best example if you take glucose and galactose and one more thing and the uh, and the 
compounds which exhibits this phenomena of epimerism are known as epimers okay and coming to the best example if you take this left one left one is a structure of glucose and right one is a structure of galactose so if you see in the fourth carbon normally glucose consists of six carbons and galactose also consists of six carbons only so if you take it the fourth carbon the in the in the glucose if you take the fourth carbon the left side it consists of h and in right side it consists of oh OH group okay but if you see in the galactose uh, uh, if the left side will be OH group and right side will be H group and this is the main difference between glucose and galactose and if you see in the glucose uh, there is a presence of uh, H towards left but in the galactose there is a presence of OH towards left so it is quite opposite to the glucose so uh, which type of epimers these are called these are called as C4 epimers these are known as C4 epimers why these are known as C4 epimers because the change the configuration takes place at the fourth carbon that's the given in the definition if you see in the definition two sugars yes two sugars we have to con we have take uh, glucose and galactose these two sugars which differ in the configuration at single carbon atom say at single carbon atom that's nothing but we have took a uh, fourth carbon atom right uh, there is a uh, there is a differ in the configuration that is nothing but there is a change in the position h uh, h and oh groups will be changed at the single carbon atom is known as epimerism and the and the, and the compounds which exhibit this phenomena of epimerism are known as epimers so these are known as epimers which epimers c4 epimers because the configuration takes place at the fourth carbon atom is known as epimers so this is the one of the best example which can be compared glue which can be compared glucose with galactose now i will take another example uh, of where the glucose will be compared with gala uh, sorry mannose where the glucose will be compared with mannose now if you compare glucose with mannose uh, uh, you know the structure of the glucose which can which consists of six carbon atoms and if you see the structure of mannose it also consists of six carbon atoms right and if you see the structure of glucose uh, in, if you see the second carbon of the structure of glucose there is a oh group which is present towards right side and h group which is present towards left side but if you see in the mannose in the second struck in the second carbon atom it consists of oh groups towards left side and h group towards right side which is quietly opposite to the glucose uh, and this change takes place where in the second carbon atom of glucose and mannose and that's what given in the definition two sugars and what are the two sugars which i have took here glucose and mannose and which differ in the configuration at the single carbon atom at which carbon atom we have to care at the second carbon atom they are known as is known as epimerism and what are epimers the epimers are nothing but which exhibit this type of uh, which exhibits this type of phenomena known as epimerism are known as epimers right and what are the epimers here these are uh, c2 epimers why it is named as c2 epimers because the configuration takes place at the second carbon atom of glucose and mannose since it is named as c2 epimers right and this is about the epimerism so in next video i'll explain to you about anomerism so thank you for watching this video guys if you have any doubts regarding this video please comment in the comment box and please do like and subscribe thank you